These are some little pin cushions that are really quick to make and they would make a great gift, a great way to use up your scraps. And um, there, you don't even have to have a sewing machine to make these, just a hot glue gun and a needle and thread is about it. So um, this type here just uh, sits on your table or shelf or next to your sewing machine. And this one is actually uh, the one that inspired me to try to make these. I um, was watching some English paper piecing uh, videos and the woman that was demonstrating had one similar to this on her finger. So I started trying to figure out how to make them. And on this one, I actually used a button and just a hair tie uh, that would fit on my finger. But if you're making these as a gift and you don't know what size to cut the rubber band or to tie the rubber band, you can buy these um, ring blanks. They're adjustable rings. And you can give these away as a gift and whoever uh, you give it to, they can just size it to their own finger. But you're still going to have to have a button or some sort of a, a blank to, um, to glue your uh, pin cushion to because this is not going to be big enough. So it's still very easy to do. On these, I used a sports drink bottle cap. This is about an inch and a half in diameter. And on one of them, I added some weight. I used some BBs into the bottom of the cap. Or you can use just uh, some aquarium gravel. You can buy a small bag of aquarium gravel, probably at Walmart. And um, just, it doesn't take much. You can put washers or anything that you think will help to give it a little bit of weight. This one, I did not put any weight in, and it seems to be fine without it. So whatever your choice is, that's fine. You can put the weight uh, or not. Both of these pincushion types are made very similarly, but I'm using different size circles. And you can experiment on what size circles you want to use, but I used my AccuQuilt Go Die it has three different size circles on it and I used the five inch circle for the main part of the um, pin cushion. I used the three inch circles for the petals and for these smaller pin cushions I used these two sizes. So this would be the main part of the pin cushion and this would be the petals. So whatever you choose to do is fine or you can use a bowl or or anything you can to make circles. It's just that the um, circles that you use for the petals should be a little bit smaller than the circle that you use for the pin cushion. But uh, just for comparison to a bottle cap, this is a five inch circle that is perfect for this bottle cap. You can add embellishments to your pin cushions. I put little buttons on the tops of these. Uh, and I added some of my Tenerife lace. We had a Tenerife lace class at our church a few weeks ago, and I just like to sit down and relax and make a whole bunch of them, and I put them in a little box um, and decide later what I'm going to use them for. So if you want to learn how to make Tenerife lace, you can go to uh, one of the videos I have in um, the playlist for the class that we had, and this is one I have in progress. Um, the class, we made our own little uh, pin cushion. This is just straight pins in here that you make a loom out of, and it's really easy to do. But you can also just buy some lace and gather it up to make a little circle, or you can just leave the lace off completely, whatever you want to do. So um, you don't even have to add a bead or a button to the top. It's just you can decorate it as much as you want to. You're also going to need some stuffing of some kind. You can use walnut shells or this polyester fiber fill, which is what I prefer to use. Some of these little quilt clips come in handy uh, with one of the techniques. It's optional. Uh, you'll need uh, glue of some kind. I like to use hot glue because it's quick. And um, you'll need a regular sewing needle, and I use regular sewing thread uh, doubled and you'll need some sort of a doll needle or a long needle if you want to add some embellishment to the top you'll need to be able to 
have a long needle that you can sew a button on or a bead or whatever. So um, that's about it as far as the supplies. For the petals, um, I'm going to be making uh, the one that has the pointed petals like this one, little pointed. And when I make that one, I, um, I use six petals. If I'm making the little curved petals, I will use five. So I've got six uh, petals cut. I've got my main pin cushion. On this one, I tried to get this flower centered on there as best I could. And then you need one more to cover the base. So um, the, this one is actually the same size as the petals, but um, you can make that any color you want. It doesn't have to match the petals. For the small pin cushion, you don't need an additional piece of fabric unless you want to cover uh, the base of that. But I usually don't mind the look of the button, and I think it's kind of cute when you use buttons. This And this one is just something that I 3D printed on my 3D printer. So that's optional, um, you know, for if you want to cover that or put ribbon around the edges of it. I've got my sewing thread doubled here on my needle. And you need enough to gather up this thing. You need enough thread on your needle to sew around the edge. I'm just going to tie a knot in there. It doesn't really matter the color of your thread because it's all going to be glued together and all that's going to be hidden underneath. So I just um, start about a quarter of an inch away from the edge, the raw edge. And um, I just start a little running stitch all the way around. You can do this on a sewing machine if you prefer, but I just, I can do this pretty quick and I just get a couple of them cut out and sit in my recliner and then just uh, gather them up and just do a few at a time if you're making them for gifts. So I'm going to do this running stitch all the way around so that I can gather up the edges of this circle. All right, I finished sewing my running stitch and I've got the end that I knotted here and where my needle came out and they're both coming out to the outside. When I gather this up and I start adding the stuffing, I, um, I want to make sure these edges don't get pulled in like that. I want them out. So I'm just pulling up on both of these threads and leaving a couple of fingers with. I need to be able to get stuffing in there. I find it easier to go ahead and tie a knot now and then come back and gather a little bit more. You can go ahead and stuff it and then pull it up, but I just find it easier now than after I do the stuffing. So that's probably a big enough hole. I'm just going to tie part of a knot. Just kind of, you don't have to worry about straightening up the gathers or anything. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my thread. You can, like I said, you can just leave it unknotted and use the same thread. But I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off and begin to stuff it. I like to use a, a pencil like this with a white eraser or any pencil is fine. If it's not rough enough, you can use sandpaper to roughen up that eraser. But I find it really helps to get this packed in there really tight. I like a lot of stuffing in there. And you can even use the pencil to push. It grabs the um, stuffing really well. So I use it quite a bit. Or you can use a dowel or anything you want. So you can get quite a bit of stuffing into this little thing. And I like them really firm. So I'm going to uh, get finished with the stuffing here and I'll show you how I close up the bottom of it. All of that you saw me trying to stuff in there, I got in there and it's still not quite as firm as I want it to be. So I just add and then I just pack it in there and push it into the underneath. But I do want the edges of this gathering to be outward. So if you have to get some tweezers or whatever, just 
Just make sure that these stay open. All right, and then you can kind of squish it into a round shape. And I'm going to thread my needle and I'm going to regather those. I'm going to just stitch uh, near the, the same lines that I stitched before and I'm going to continue to close this up. It doesn't have to be closed all the way, but if I left it like this, the stuffing would start popping out. Okay, I've got my thread doubled for strength and I'm just going to grab onto one of these little pleats. And I'm going to run my needle back through that again because a knot will pull through once I start pulling really hard on this. And I'm just going to just follow the same gathers and then just tug. And if I have to backstitch every now and then, I'll do that. And uh, just be careful not to rip the fabric because I've done that. So if I feel like I've got to gather and then tie a little backstitch, I'll backstitch a little bit just to help me out. But for the most part, it, it goes pretty fast. You don't have to be real particular about it. Just, just a rough sewing around the edges until I get that uh, cinched up a little bit tighter. Yeah, I hope I didn't rip there, but it sounded like it seems to be doing okay. And I'll poke my finger in there to keep the stuffing from getting in my way. So I'm going to continue around till I get it closed up as much as I want it to be. All right, I think that's going to work right there. So I'm just going to back stitch and then just tie a knot. This is all going to be glued down my thread hung up right there, but I'm not worried about it because all this is going to have glue holding it down, and it's not going to matter what happens to this thread. I just don't want it to break until I get ready to uh, glue everything together. And I am not being careful. I'm, I'm going pretty fast here to try to make the videos short so I'm not being as careful as I normally would so I can go ahead and cut that and just trim up all this craziness and um, and I still have the raw edges to the outside they're not pulled in so that's pretty cute if you want to add a button or some beads now is the time to do it and you can go ahead and sew that down you can add some embroidery or some uh, thread to make it look like a tomato pin cushion. Whatever you want to do is probably better to do that at this point before we start gluing everything together. All right, I've got my thread doubled, which is what I'm going to do throughout this project. And I want to make the petals now. And these little um, curved ones like this if you're making a petal like that, you just fold your petal in half and you gather this curved edge and it makes a cute little puffy petal. But we're going to be making these pointed petals like on this one. So you fold it in half and then you fold it in half again to where you have just the curved edge here and you have this solid piece here and a little opening here. So once you do that, we're going to gather this curved edge. We're going to be gathering along here. And I like to start at the place where those two folds come together. I don't have a knot in my thread, but I think that I don't need one. So I'm just going to grab a little bite of that and before my thread goes all the way through, I'll tie a knot now. Go ahead and take a little bite and then run my needle through there. And if that doesn't hold, I'll have to tie another knot. So I'm just gonna pull on it, make sure it holds. And then same as before, I'm just gonna do some gathering. And you can make all of your petals separate or you can just string them all together. Sometimes I, I make them separate. Sometimes I find that easier. Just depends on what I feel like doing. 
but I'll show you a couple of these. And we're going to do six of them. Checking the camera to see if I'm not drifting away. All right, when I get to the end of this one, I like to go ahead and secure it with a knot, even though it may not be gathered as much as it needs to be. Because I have gotten to the end of six petals before and broke my thread and had to start over. So I'd rather lock this in as best I can. And then we have another opportunity later to gather it up some more. But I'm going to just go ahead and just tie a little securing knot at the end of this thing just to hold it in place and uh, we'll go on to the next petal. So I'm, I'm going to leave my thread attached. I'm going to fold up another petal, fold it in half. If you had a definite wrong side and a right side, you would want your wrong side to not show. You want it on the inside. So that's the next petal, and I like these things to be all facing in the same direction. So I ended up here, so my, um, my little opening needs to go there. So all I'm going to do is start off just the way I started the last one, except for I don't need a knot. I'm just going to take a little bite, a little less than a quarter inch from the edge. I'm just going to leave that other one dangling. It's best not to try to draw them too close together at this point. Try to stay where you can see. And I'm going to do all six of them. I'll just show you these two so it, the video doesn't get too long. And if I ran out of thread at this point, I would just, you know, tie on and, or if I broke the thread or whatever, it's not a big deal. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and gather that one up against the first one as tight as I can. And then just secure it at the end. and we'll straighten all this out later. This is just gonna be a holding stitch for me. And see, that one's not as gathered as the other one, but I'm not worried about that right now. And what I do is I use these little clips because in a minute, these are gonna all start getting all wonky. So every time I finish a pair, I'll add a clip to keep them from just getting in my way. So I'm gonna add the next four petals around and I'll meet you when I'm almost finished with that. All right, I just finished the last petal, or I'm just finishing it. And I'm going to tie a knot here. Hopefully I have enough thread to go back around again. If not, I would cut my thread now. So I'm going to trim off these beginning tails so they don't get in my way. And I want to join these two ends together. I think I'll just pick them up, do it like this. Just a little stitch. You don't have to be picky about it. Just tie a little knot. And I can see already that the hole in the middle is bigger than I want it to be because it's ultimately going to sit on this cap. It's not too bad off. I mean, it's still going to be fine like that. I just want it closed up just a little more. So what I'm going to do is I am going to... Um, kind of pull these gathers in a little bit. Some of them are tight, some of them are not. So I'm just going to do with the same thread or you can use a, a new a new thread if you want to. And I'm just going to kind of go through these pleats one more time. Pulling up and back stitching when I need to. 
and just kind of cinching it in just a little bit more until you're satisfied with the way it looks. So you get the idea. I'm going to cinch this up a little bit more and we'll go on to the next step. I cinched this up a little bit more and I like the way it looks now so I'm just going to set that aside and we'll start working on covering the cap. So what we want to do is another running stitch just like we've done before. I won't demonstrate that. Just do a running stitch all the way around and then we'll, we're going to set the cap right in the middle. So let me get started on that. On all the way around I've got my two ends sticking out and just draw it up just a little bit just to get it started don't tie a knot or anything right now you don't need to with this bottle cap because it's not like you're trying to stuff it or anything so just get it started like that and I've started heating up my glue gun and you can add a little dab of glue in the middle if you think it's going to help you put the uh, keep the bottle cap in place but I haven't really had any problems with that. You just want to make sure that you have enough fabric all the way around evenly to be able to pull this in and glue it. So I'm just going to cinch that up and tie a knot to tighten it up. And I can reposition that bottle cap even after I tie this knot, hopefully. But you never know when you're on camera whether everything's going to go the way it should. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the thread. I'll reposition all of that and make sure that I have enough fabric to fold in and I'll check and see if my glue gun is heated up. All right. I'm just going to put a little glue on one side. Try not to burn myself like I usually do. Get my glue gun in here a little bit closer to me. And then I'll go on the opposite side. And then just keep doing little dots of glue until you have it secure in there. I don't want these working their way to the outside later, so I'm going to go ahead and secure them now. I haven't had it melt the bottle cap yet, so I'm not putting a lot of glue. But I haven't had that problem, so just be careful. All right. So you can add a little weight at this point if you want to. And I think I'm just going to put a little bit of this aquarium gravel in there. And I'm just going to add a little glue to the bottom. And hopefully that won't melt my cap. And just throw, throw some of these smaller pieces in there. bit of an interruption 
so I didn't want you to hear my dog barking, but I kept adding just a thin layer of glue and then adding more rocks on top. You can't just leave just loo loose rocks in there because if you try to glue your uh, components on, the whole thing's just going to lift out of there. So I just put a little glue in the bottom and then a little, a few rocks and then a little bit more glue. And that feels uh, pretty heavy to me. I mean, that's, that's probably just right. So um, I've decided I want to use, I think I like the color of this one. So that's going to go down next because I want it to look like that one underneath the pet, just peeking out from underneath the petals. So this is an optional step. You don't have to add lace here if you don't want to. So what I'm going to do is um, I want to add around the rim, if I can do it neatly enough, because I don't want to glue so much to the rocks because they may not hold in there. So I want to have enough around the rim without it showing on the outside just to set my little doily in there, my little medallion. And then my petals are going to go next on top of that. I'm just going to add a little glue around the edge here. And try to center that on there. You can straight the, straighten the petals out later. And now the top, and then we'll be finished with this pin cushion. Try to lean over it. Hopefully I'm not in the camera, but I like to center this thing on there. Because with hot glue, it's pretty much going to be right where you put it. It's going to stay. So this one is just about finished. I'll just do a little cleanup. And there you have it. Now on these little pin cushions like this, if you wanted to use a rubber band, you would just run the rubber band through your button. Don't use a fat uh, rubber band like this one. Uh, you, you're not going to be able to get it through a button. You want some thinner hair hair bands. And I just cut them. And then um, these are 3D printed, but you can find some buttons that have bigger holes in them, or you can drill the holes out if you want to, and then you just run the um, the two ends through and I wanted mine recessed that's why I 3d printed them this way because I wanted that knot to have a place to hide inside of there without getting in my way so if you don't use the rubber band method all you have to do is um, glue it like this to the bottom of your little pin cushion so that the flat side is out and then get some super glue and glue on one of these uh, ring blanks. Some of them I bought are flat on the top. These are made for the uh, to put a cabochon or something like that in there. So um, I, I haven't tried these, but you're going to want to put a sufficient amount of glue to hold those on. This one was a flat one, and it fit better flat against and I put super glow on there and it holds really well. So uh, just keep that in mind if you try to find some of these. Uh, I bought two kinds on Amazon and I like the flat ones better. So um, that's real easy to do and uh, it'll fit anybody because you can adjust that ring. So um, this one's to me a little bit more comfortable because it's, it's a rubber band, but I sized it only for my fingers. So um, anyway, these are really cute and quick to make, and I hope you enjoyed the video.